My name is Annette Barraza and this is my genetics project. For the geneticist, I chose Edward Laurie Tatum. No, not Channing Tatum. Unfortunately, this is not that kind of presentation. Tatum was born December 14th, 1909, died November 5th, 1975, uh, shortly after marrying his third wife, and he was an American geneticist. He shared half of the Nobel Peace Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1958 with George Wells Beadle, they are most commonly known as Beadle and Tatum, for showing that genes control individual steps in metabolism, better known as the one gene, one enzyme hypothesis. Tatum was born in Boulder, Colorado, the oldest of three siblings. Both of Edward's parents excelled academically. His father held two degrees, an MD and a PhD in pharmacology. Edward's mother was one of the first women to graduate from the University of Colorado. An interest in science and medicine ran in the Tatum family. Edward would become an ed a research scientist, his brother physician, and his sister a nurse. Tatum earned his BA degree in chemistry from the U University of Wisconsin in 1931 and his master's degree in 1932 in microbiology. Two years later, in 1934, he received a PhD in biochemistry for a dissertation on the cellular biochemistry and nutritional needs of a bacterium. Understanding the biochemistry of microorganisms such as bacteria, yeast, and molds would persist at the heart of Tatum's career. After receiving his doctorate, Tatum remained at the University of Wisconsin for one year as a research assistant in biochemistry. During that time that Tatum was contacted by geneticist George Beadle. Seven years older than Tatum, Beadle had done genetic studies with the fruit fly Drosophila at the California Institute of Technology. Beadle, newly arrived at Stanford, was now looking for a biochemist who could collaborate with him as he continued his work in genetics. By 1935, he had developed suggestive evidence that eye color, known to be inherited, represents a series of genetically determined chemical reactions. His work over the next six years, much of it with Tatum, furthered this hypothesis. But the complexity of Drosophila proved a drawback to developing experiments that would demonstrate a link between specific genes and their chemical products. In 1941, Beetle and Tatum turned to a simpler creature in which specific products of metabolism could be directly studied. A bread mold proved ideal. This fungus has a short lifestyle Normal products of the sexual recombination could multiply in a simple growth medium. However, Beetle and Tatum showed that some of the mutant spores would not replicate without addition of a specific amino acid, arginine. They developed four strains of arginine-dependent neurospora, each of which they showed had lost the use of a specific gene that ordinarily facilitates one particular enzyme necessary to the production of arginine. In 1945, at the end of the war, Tatum accepted an appointment at Yale University as an associate professor of botany and became a professor of microbiology once he established that program within that department. In work begun at Stanford and continued at Yale, he demonstrated that the one gene, one enzyme theory applied to yeast and bacterium, as well as molds. Apparently, the move was due to Stanford's lack of encouragement of Tatum, who failed to fit into the tidy category of biochemist or biologist or geneticist because he had already mastered all three fields. Though he returned in 1945 to Stanford as professor of biology and helped establish the Department of Biochemistry. In 1956 he became a professor of biochemistry and head of the department. Increasingly Tatum's talents were devoted to promoting science at an administration level. In a second collaboration, Tatum began working with Joshua Lederberg in March 1946. Lederberg, a Columbia University medical student 15 years younger than Tatum, was at Yale during a break in the medical school curriculum. That was when Tatum and Lederberg began studying the bacterium E. coli. The two scientists proved that E. coli reproduced sexually. When cultures of two different mutant bacteria were mixed, a third strain, one showing characteristics taken from each parent, resulted. The discovery of biparental inheritance in bacteria, which Tatum called genetic recombination, provided geneticists with a new experiment organ organism. Again, Tatum's methods had altered the practices of experimental biology. Lederberg never returned to medical school, earning, instead, a PhD from Yale. Edward Tatum helped create the field of molecular genetics with his landmark early work. 
demonstrating that specific genes control the structure of particular enzymes by regulating specific chemical processes. The underlying hypothesis, he wrote, which in a number of cases has been supported by direct experimental evidence, is that each gene controls the production, function, and specificity of a particular enzyme. Beadle and Tatum's fairly simple experiment was a keystone in the development of molecular biology. In its basic form, the concept that genes produce enzymes had been first put forth as early as 1901 by Archibald Garrod, as Beadle acknowledged when he and Tatum were awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1958. In his study of people suffering from a particular inherited enzyme deficiency, Garrett had noticed the disease seemed to be inherited as a Mendelian recessive. Tatum and Beetle were the first to offer extensive experimental evidence for this theory. Their use of laboratory methods like x-rays to create genetic mutations also introduced a powerful tool for future experiments in biochemical genetics. While Garrett's work had been largely ignored, Beetle and Tatum's research more than three decades later was immediately recognized. As a boy, Edward played the French horn and trumpet. His interest in music lasted his whole life. He also enjoyed swimming and ice skating. He was also an accomplished performer on the French horn as seen here. He married the same year he completed his PhD in Wisconsin. Tatum wed June Alton in 1934. They eventually had two daughters before the divorce. In 1956, he married Viola Cantor in New York City. She died in 1974. Tatum married Elise Berglund later in 1974, and she survived his death the following year on November 5, 1975. A lifelong cigarette smoker, Tatum was killed by emphysema. In a memoir written for the Annual Review of Genetics, Letterberg recalled that Tatum's last years were marred by ill health, substantially self-inflicted by a notorious smoking habit. Letterberg also noted that Tatum's mental outlook was scarred by the painful death of his second wife. Tatum mentored many students who later became prominent geneticists. Aside from Joshua Letterberg, Tatum also mentored Esther M. Letterberg, who differed from her well-known husband in that she was considered a genius in the lab. Dwarf standing on the shoulders of giants is a very common term applied to researchers that get the credit for the discovery that has been built from those of past researchers. My personal evaluation of Tatum is that though his research was similar to others, him and Beetle were the first to prove the hypothesis and thus deserve full credit. He took time later in life to mentor others and created lasting effects long after he was gone. Though the way in which he passed cannot be described in any other way but ironic. Surely a geneticist, biochemist, biologist would have realized what his hobby, smoking, was doing to him. Granted, he was no Channing Tatum, but Edward Tatum's findings transformed genetics for a short time until it was modified to what we all know today as the one gene, one polypeptide hypothesis.